Starship will reach orbit by July, has SpaceX just tried to get the first mission for Starship? When hope? I will try to answer this and many other questions in the first episode of Starship Updates. We'll start off with the legendary SN10. SpaceX has published a high altitude flight recap which has some exciting shots. First, we can see a beautiful shot of Raptor ignition in slow motion. We have lift off. Then there are a couple more views from onboard cameras and most importantly a close-up of Starship skirt, which answers a few questions. Here we can see two things. Firstly, we can see that the two Raptors haven't shut down completely, which probably isn't a bad sign. However, what is a bad sign is that one of the engines had a few short bursts of green flames. Generally, this means that the engines are running oxygen-rich, which means that the fuel mixture ratio contains too much oxygen. The Raptor combustion chamber mostly consists of copper, which when burned, creates the iconic green flame. Secondly, it appears that the prototype fuel lines were leaking and this was the cause of the onboard fire during the landing. During his latest flight, Mauricio from RGV Aerial Photography has captured a fascinating phenomenon. As we can see, the prototype with serial number 10 crashed into the ground with such a velocity that it has left a few footprints. It appears though that the landing pad is almost undamaged and it won't need any repairs for the SN11 flight. Winding up this segment, we have an FAA statement regarding the SN10 flight. It looks like the prototype explosion wasn't a public safety concern, which ultimately resulted in FAA giving a green light for the next flight. Speaking of SN11, not that long ago there was a static fire, right? Well, partially yes. The procedure of getting the prototype ready for the test went almost flawlessly. About 12.27 am Texas time we've had an ignition followed by an instant abort. Unfortunately, the sounds made by the Raptor engines weren't a good sign. In the time of recording this video, none of the engines were replaced, also there weren't any new road closures. Though, I have two theories. The first one is, warning, it might sound a bit controversial, that SpaceX will fly without conducting a second static fire, and the second one is that they just don't have any spare Raptors that are compatible with SN11. As we know, SpaceX has switched to a new modular generation of Raptors, which could mean that they are waiting to manufacture one or more of the new old Raptors. It's only my theory, but it would explain why nothing happened in the last few days regarding the prototype. Now, let's look at our flight checklist. We have the FAA flight approval, there were notams for March 19th, 20th and 21st, but as of now they were withdrawn, and finally Elon himself tweeted that the SN11 is almost ready for flight. We'll see how the situation develops in the next few days. Will there be another static fire, or will Elon Musk's company jump straight to the test flight? Time will tell. Waiting for Starship flight is really exciting, but that's not the only interesting thing happening right now in Boca Chica. NASA Spaceflight's inside source told them that SpaceX is planning to conduct the first orbital flight by, wait for it, July the 1st, 2021. As we know, prototypes with serial numbers 12, 13 and 14 were discarded because serial number 8, 9 and 10 showed that the ascent stage, propellant transfer, starship maneuvers using flaps and landing flip work flawlessly. This means that there is no need for more flights using the same old hardware. SN11 is the last one of the old generation. After this flight, SpaceX will jump right to the SN15, which will have a few important hardware changes. In the meantime, booster number 1, We'll come back to him later and number two will be tested as well. The inside plan of Elon Musk's company assumes that the serial number 20 will be mated with booster number three and together they will conduct a first of its kind orbital flight. Moreover, Elon Musk himself confirmed that the full stack will indeed happen in July. With the current tempo of progress, I don't think that this deadline is achievable, but who knows. We need to remember that aside from landing, SpaceX Starship performs almost excellent, which means that they can introduce major changes and polish the landing procedure at the same time. Before we continue, the more support I get from you guys, the more time I can spend creating these videos for you. If you like what I'm doing, don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe. 
Anyway, back to the video. SpaceX must really believe that the Starship will reach orbit by 2022. The next thing I'm about to tell you just confirms it. On March 11th, NASA Space Agency released a document in which we can read about the re-evaluation of the bid made by SpaceX regarding the Tropics mission. As the name suggests, this mission's target is to create a constellation of CubeSats to monitor the atmosphere near the tropical parts of Earth. There were four participants in this competition – Astra, Momentus, Rocket Lab and of course SpaceX. The tender was won by Astra, but the most important part here is why SpaceX wasn't chosen. As we can read in the paper, there were two reasons. The first one is that SpaceX did not clearly demonstrate progress toward the resolution of the environmental assessment, which results in risk associated with obtaining an FAA launch license increasing the likelihood of delays that would affect contract performance. So in simple terms, SpaceX never receives the FAA approval on time. The second assigned weakness was associated with SpaceX not having achieved even one of their own milestones. NASA is worried that Elon Musk's company won't be able to have a rocket ready for flight on time. But wait, Falcon 9 carried out hundreds of satellites into space and the rocket itself is 100% finished. Well, it looks like Elon has tried to assign the first mission for Starship. This sounds crazy, especially that the first Tropic satellite is scheduled to be launched on January 8, 2022. I can't wait for the first cargo mission of this giant rocket. If that wasn't enough amazing news for you, I have even more. One of SpaceX employees shared on his Snapchat view from the top of the high bay. This one minute recording shows the incredible perspective that the workers have from this building. We can see the whole built complex plus the Copernic shore surrounding Boca Chica. We can also see the high bay elevator and the future high bay bar with glass floor to look at Starship while enjoying a cold drink. I just hope that the author of this recording wasn't fired. Speaking of high bay, the massive SpaceX crane called Tangzilla was upgraded. This has allowed it to start the final step of constructing booster number one. The world's first super heavy booster was just finished, but we'll talk about it in the next episode. Just as a quick reminder, the super heavy booster will use 28 Raptor engines to allow Starship's second stage to get through the Karman line right into space. Of course, booster number one will use a maximum of four Raptor engines. It will go through cryotest, then wet res rehearsal and finally a static fire. Unfortunately, because it's a Pathfinder prototype, it won't conduct a 150 meter hop. Of course, the Tangzilla crane is just a temporary solution and on March 18, Mary spotted in Boca Chica a bridge crane that will be mounted on top of high bay and used for future Starship stacking. Philip Botin snapped a few photos of Starship legs. You might say, yeah, nothing special. But it turns out that those legs are heading off to Brownsville and they probably aren't coming back, which means that the new leg design is really close and it's possible that we'll see them mounted on SN17. I'm really curious to see what new design SpaceX came up with. Next up, we have two puzzles. The first one is this weird white construction captured by Mauricio from RGV Aerial Photography. As we can see, it consists of six white overgrown rods, 18 flat fragments and a hexagonal ring. Mary from NASA Spaceflight took a photo of partially assembled construction. Right now, we have no clue what it could be used for, but two ideas have emerged. The first one was created by Felix Schlank from the channel What About It. The second one is the expansion of Felix's idea animated by Owi. It shows how the parts could fit together. Though it's still hard to tell what's the purpose of this mysterious construction. It looks too flimsy to be a super heavy test stand. Hopefully the puzzle will get solved in the following days. But it's not the end of mysterious things in Boca Chica. As you can see in the photo, we have a few black round pipes that are dug into the ground near the landing pad. What could it be? Leave your guesses in the comment section. In my opinion, it could be a more powerful water cannon to extinguish fire more efficiently in case of a mishap or it could also be a debris barrier to protect expensive equipment on the tank farm. The test tank known as serial number 7.2 was taken back to the manufacturing facility. To quickly recap, right now SpaceX is using 4mm thick 304L steel for building prototypes. SN7-2 was supposed to test the max pressure that can withstand 3mm steel. During the second cryo test, one of the welds on the tank has failed, causing the loss of pressure. The tank was later repaired and we were expecting another test campaign really soon, but either SpaceX gathered enough data from the previous test or the tank had a major design flaw and was retired. Anyway, SN7-2 was transported back to the manufacturing facility where it's probably awaiting to be scrapped. 
From the rest of the news, we have a new raptor in Boca Chica. Serial number 59 is another one of the new generation raptors that don't have the trans vector control system attached. All of this means that probably this is a modular engine that will fit in both Starship second stage and super heavy booster. Of course, it's just a theory, but I think that it makes sense. To wrap up our Starship update, we have one of two oil rigs owned by SpaceX that will become Starship sea launch platforms in, in the future. As you can see, the tower on the Phobos oil rig is being slowly disassembled. According to Elon Musk's tweet, at least one of the sea platforms should be operational by the end of this year. That's all I've got for you in this episode of Starship Updates. I hope that it wasn't too bad, because it's one of my first videos ever created in English. Though, if you liked it, then don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!